Hey guys, it's the Fisher Brad, and today I'll be showing you a video called Pipe Fishing 101. Now this video consists of three different days. The first day I went out with a guy named Tim, the second day I went out with my friend named Daniel, and the third day I went out with my friend named Wade. We've all caught pike throughout the whole three days. It was really nice. The first day I caught two that were about 30 inches a piece and one smaller one. The second day I caught a lot of smaller ones. We've seen a lot of big ones, but they didn't really want to play. And the third day I caught a really nice one and about maybe two or three small ones. Now, I'll start you guys off seeing the big one I caught today and then I'll go throughout tips throughout the whole video. So it's really important that you stay tuned throughout the whole video because I'll be giving you tips along the way with every catch. Nice big huge one guys. Check this out, bud! Monster, guys! First cast right on out there. Huge fish! On a nice map. Nice solid fish. I'm gonna actually get it on the strainer real quick before I take the lure out just in case it flies out. Like I said, nice fish, guys. Shh. The rocks. Come over here. Uh, yeah. Nice 32 inch fish, guys. I actually just lost my big fish. It bit through the strainer. Another new tip I have for everyone, including myself. Always make sure you have a thick line strainer when you get pike. Third cast. Gotta get a tape on this guy real quick. Maybe about 20, 22. But we'll see. Okay. Don't want to bite me, so I'm holding its mouth openward, just like that so its jawline can't bite me. I never carry pliers, so always the most difficult part is I'm hooking these guys. All right. Got them off. Got the measurement on them real quick. Twenty-two and a half inches, so not a bad one. So first pike of the day so far. All right, guys, as you've seen in that video, it's really important, as soon as you feel a difference in the line movement, the hook set right away. It might be a rock or it might be a, a log, but a lot of the times it's probably a fish if you know where you're casting. As soon as you feel that change, it's a fish, you got a hook set, keep your line tight, lift your pole upwards in the air, 
Otherwise, the fish's head's gonna be down and below and it can shake and jerk. A lot of the pike have a really good jerky motion with their head and it just throws your lure off right away. So make sure that line's nice and tight and your pull's upward and you'll be able to reel them in nice and easy, just like I did. All right, guys, I didn't have my tripod set out. It was the second cast. We just caught our first fish of the day. I'm fishing with a guy named Tim, taking him out, showing him how to do it. Got a nice 31 inch pike or 30 inch pike. Super cool. Second cast, bit right away. Tim was super stoked when he seen it because he's super excited to get on the fish today. Just got my second pike for the day. Not too bad, but it's got some lamprey marks on it, so it had a lamprey on it, so I might have saved its life catching it. Could have just came off, had it happen multiple times to me. I don't want it to bite down on me. Of course, I did not bring pliers today, so it's time to risk it to see if I get bit. Got the lure out. My guess is it's about 20 inches or so, but it's a nice size fish. I'm gonna put it back now. Without this net, I'd really struggle, especially when a bigger fish comes towards me. If you can't net it right away, you don't really want to beach a big fish because it could just flop right on and flop in the water and then it's gone. So you want to make sure you stay, keep it calm and controlled and then get in your net. When you're casting, you always want to cast downstream for pike. If you cast upstream, it gives them more time to shake their head and get off before you even know they're there. If you cast downstream also, it's, it makes it super easy to throw a spinner bait or whatever bait you're throwing at a slower speed but moving at a bigger motion. As you can tell, they can bite. I just caught my second one for a keeper anyway. So, didn't get these guys on video. However, they were really nice fish. We were walking down. Awesome size fish, guys. So, super cool. Really wanted to get one that was about both the sizes combined, but that didn't happen. All right, guys, it's day two of my video, Pike Fishing 101. Yesterday was super awesome. I got my limit. Um, we got three big fish, but we didn't get any of them really on video. Um, just because when I caught them, I was actually walking downstream and we really can't have the camera set up on the side while we walk. But I got one small one on video too. It turned out pretty nice, so we're gonna see if we can get some more big ones today. I have him set up with a double-bladed maps. Super great lure. Um, that's mostly what we're gonna throw today. Right here, got a whole box full of them. Honestly, any of these will really work. I like the bigger ones better just because when a fish goes to bite it, um, if it's a pike, they have a lot of teeth. So they'll actually swallow the lure whole and they'll bite your line all the way through. Where if it's a bigger lure, normally they miss the line and they just bite the lure. So that's why I really recommend buying bigger lures for these fish. But the small ones will work too and I mean they're just more risky. Fight. 
fish ended up taking off right at the end before I can net it. Um, it they fight pretty good, guys. So once you get them on, you got to keep that pole tight, the pole bent over, and your rod tip up. If you have it down, they can jerk their head away, and then they're, they're gone. They can shake the lure right off their lure. So we're going to try it again and see if we can get one now. As you've seen in that video right there, I was doing everything right, had my pole tight, went to hook set, but that pike, the bigger the pike, they just got bigger mouths, so they can swallow your lure hole, and it, it just bit right through my line. I only battled it for two seconds. You could see the splash in the water, all the action. It was at least over a 30 inch pike. I was able to see the body for maybe two or three seconds. So we're gonna try to throw on another lure right now and see if we can try to recatch it, because I didn't really get a battle it, so I might not even know it was hooked. Some people recommend using steel leaders, but I do not. I actually get more hits without running steel leaders. So I run 30 pound braid. I normally run Power Pro line. It doesn't fray up when it hits rocks. It doesn't fray up when it hits um, logs or anything like that. It's a really nice quality line. I don't really run anything less than 30 unless I'm running an ultralight. So I use a medium action rod, ugly stick. Super nice for pike, super nice for any species, honestly, guys. Um, but like I said, don't run a steel leader. Just keep the line tight. Yeah, sometimes you'll lose a lure or two, but you'll get so many more hits. And if you're really wanting to go out and get a lot of fish or a lot of big fish, don't run a steel leader. Just keep the line tight, get practice with it, and you'll turn out a lot better. When you're casting, if you're new at throwing maps or any kind of spinnerbait, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna throw it straight across the river or downstream. This helps the lure spin really good in the water. If you throw it upstream, you can if you're an experienced angler, especially with maps. But if not, I highly do not recommend it. A lot of the times, if the line has any slack, the pike will just swallow the lure, bite it, and it's gone. Or also, even just if it's just going downstream, the fish are, are more likely to hit it because it's moving slower and you get a nice moving pace on the lure. Pike are really aggressive, so they're going to hit pretty hard. So if you don't hook set right away, chances are they're going to get off. So you want to make sure you keep reeling in nice and good, nice, strong consistency, especially when you're reeling in just your cast lure. Um, you want to make sure it's consistent. If it changes speed, the pike might miss and strike ahead of the lure or strike below the lure, and it's not going to get it at all, or it'll get you. You can tell line. pike are a lot of fun to play with. Um, the lures are kind of expensive, so but once you have them, you have them for life. You know, as long as you don't lose them, as long as you don't break them, the bigger lure you buy, the stronger the hooks are normally. So it might be better off to start with buying bigger lures just because it's easier and they're not going to break as easy. Um, so just get the big size maps to start off with, then you can go with the smaller ones, like the size 3, the size 2s. Honestly, all sizes work. They'll all catch a fish as I showed you the whole box. I carry them all on me at all times. You never know what colors are going to work that day. I like the greens, I like the reds, I like the yellows. Anything that really sticks out. The pinks work really well too, especially in murky water like it is today. You can only see maybe like 7 or 8 inches in water clarity. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I gave you guys a lot of tips and techniques on how to catch pike. They're a lot of fun to play with, so go out and catch some. Now if you want to keep them, I really recommend watching my other video called How to Fillet a Pike Boneless. Super easy video, it shows you how to make five easy fillets that are completely bonus. You can beer batter them, you can do whatever you want to them and they'll taste amazing. So go get some dinner guys.